On today's episode, I will be placing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the pop culture pedestal. one-off Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, Turtles Forever, I believe was broadcast in segments on Nickelodeon and then eventually was released to DVD. This movie really was a treat. You see what they did, they took the Ninja Turtles from the 1987 cartoon and they took the Ninja Turtles from the 2003 series, which we just spoke about, and they put them both into their own animated film. Now how did they do that? You see, in this movie, the Ninja Turtles from 1987 series are accidentally transported to the dimension or reality where the two 2003 turtles exist. As the episode starts, we see the 1987 turtles try to stop the 2003 Purple Dragon Gang and they fail and they get captured. After seeing CCTV footage of this fight on the news, the 2003 Ninja Turtles go to the Purple Dragon's hideout and rescue the 1987 Turtles. Meanwhile, the 1987 Shredder and Krang bring the Technodrome to the 2003 universe. Immediately, Shredder from the 1987 universe tries to track down the 2003 universe's Shredder, who, as you may remember, is a Neutron. The 1987 Shredder does this by using some kind of ridiculous... Technodrome technology and simply finds the 2003 Shredder light years away from her, frozen in a floating, in like an iceberg in space. Now, I, I didn't actually see all of the 2003 episodes, but I presume that the Shredder was defeated by the Ninja Turtles and this is what ultimately happened to him. And so the 2003 Shredder is transported to the uh, Technodrome. And it's not long before the 2003 Shredder takes over the show and remodifies the entire 1987 foot soldiers, making them more lethal. And he also transforms the Technodrome as well and makes it a more dangerous vehicle that more suits the 2003 cartoon. And he becomes obsessed in finding the universe that started it all, which in the cartoon is called Turtle Prime. This is where the Mirage Comics Turtles exist the very first comic book version of the Ninja Turtles, and yet we see them in this movie at the end, and it is, it is, like I said, it's quite a treat, it's fantastic. Uh, this movie is it's just so much fun. We, we get the 1987 Turtles visiting the 2003 Turtles world, but we also get the 2003 Turtles visiting the very cartoony 1987 world as well. We also get the 2003 Turtles commenting on how strange the appearances of the people in the 1987 universe are, because that is one thing you can say about the 1987 series, is that the designs were very strange and the people did not look at all like human beings even though they, they were they were drawn in an unusual way with big heads what were too big for the bodies and and you know like big exaggerated facial features for some of the characters they were drawn in a very exaggerated way and in this cartoon they actually comment on this the 2003 turtles comment on this there is a scene in the cartoon when the 2003 turtles arrive in the 1987 universe where they witness the 1987 april being attacked by some really strange villains. One is actually like a, a big mutated banana and I think it's Michelangelo who actually runs up to him and defeats him by peeling him. And it just showed us once again how silly the 1987 cartoons was, even though people my age absolutely loved them cartoons at the time. We got to saw the Channel 6 news building. We got to see the old 1987 Turtle Van. We got to see the 1987 Turtle Blimp. We got to see 1987 version of Splinter. And for a split second, we see April's best friend, Irma. Uh, she walks past one of the scenes. Uh, there, there's actually loads to take in when they go back to the 1987 world where someone, of, like I said, someone of my age would be looking for these little things and appreciate them and I suppose with it being a 25 year anniversary of the original cartoon they've just got to include all these little easter eggs for my generation and that's what made this cartoon such a pleasure to watch. But if I did have one gripe with this animated movie is that the 1987 Turtles are portrayed as a joke throughout the whole movie. The 2003 Turtles seem to get irritated a lot by the goofy antics. Even the 2003 Michelangelo who at first sees the funny side and enjoys the silly antics of the 1987 cartoon Turtles, he eventually does start getting fed up with them as well and sees them as just a big nuisance. That's one thing I, I didn't like. It, they were portrayed as a joke and you know, 1987 cartoon was a lot more silly and a lot more childish but there were also some serious tones and 
the turtles were a lot serious than how they are portrayed in this cartoon. Now that is a gripe that I have with this, but it's not a major gripe and it didn't take away any of the enjoyment I had from watching the film. It is still a very, very good film. Now the best bit in this movie, or should I say my favourite part in this movie, is towards the end of the film where we see all eight Ninja Turtles, the 2003 and the 1987 Turtles, transported right back into the original black and white comic book. We see them in the original black and white pages of issue one of the Mirage comic book. And we get the super serious adult version of the Ninja Turtles which appeared in that first issue. And they actually help the Ninja Turtles defeat Shredder. And they also use quotes directly from the Mirage first issue. And it was great to actually say they animated this bit as well. Once the Turtles arrive in this comic book version of this universe, it's actually animated in black and white. And the Mirage Turtles are animated in black and white. It's only the 1987 Turtles and the 2003 Turtles that stay in full colour. Oh, and another thing I almost forgot to mention about this um, comic book universe that we're treated to. We actually see the Mirage Studios version of Shredder. Which, as you may remember in the original comic books, he died in the very first issue. And in this one, we see him um, jump up to challenge the Ninja Turtles. And then we see the 1987 Turtles actually throw trash at him and knock him off the building. So in a way, the 1987 Turtles actually defeated the Mirage Studios Shredder, which I thought was quite funny. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get any of the original voice cast members from the 1987 series. That, that was a real shame. And also, I noticed that none of the original 1987 theme tunes was played at any time during this film. And... After a little bit of searching online, I found out that this was actually due to copyright issues. Now, we often see the 1987 Ninja Turtles breaking the fourth wall and talking to the viewer directly. And the 2003 characters have no idea what they are doing or what is going on. And this is something that happened constantly in the 1987 series. But not something you would really see in the 2003 series. So it was funny to see the 2003 characters react to the 1987 Turtles breaking the fourth wall. Now, I mentioned before we see some of the older 1987 characters appear when they go back to the 1987 universe. What I failed to mention is that we also see Bebop and Rocksteady in the human form walk past the camera. We also see the Ninja Pizza Pizzeria and we see the Ninja Dentist building and all these were featured in the very first episode of the 1987 cartoon and I thought that was really great how they, how they added those in as well. A nice little Easter egg to us fans. And whilst we're talking about Easter eggs, there's also a scene in the movie where the 2003 Shredder activates the dimension portals or whatever you might call it. And up on the screen, you see all the different versions of the Ninja Turtles. It's supposed to be like different realities in the movie. And we actually see all these different variations of the Ninja Turtles that we know. Uh, we get to see the live action Turtles. We get to see the TV series Ninja Turtles. We also get to see different versions of the comic book Ninja Turtles. And there have been a few over the years. We also get to see some anime Ninja Turtles. And that is from the two-parter which we talked about recently. The, the strange manga anime style Ninja Turtles cartoon that we were treated to if you want to say that. And like I said these are all portrayed as different universes and different dimensions which all these Ninja Turtles exist. I mean this movie really was a treat for all the fans out there who have been following the Ninja Turtles for the last 25 years. 25 years at that time when this movie was released. It really was just a treat. The DVD version, I believe, of, of Turtles Forever movie, if you, if you buy it from the UK, I believe it's uncut. A lot of other countries have it, but it has been cut heavily. So I do recommend you try and get it from the UK if you can. 